What's up, everyone? On today's episode, John ja Morant did it again. How it's a surprise to you. Maybe you haven't been where I've been and seen what I've seen, but you know when people aren't on the right track. He wasn't. I'll fully explain why. And even if you don't like sports, if you have anyone going down the wrong path, you should pay attention because this applies to all of you, and it's something you just need to take in. So take it in, baby. Take it all in. What's up, everybody? It's the Tricky Guy Sports Podcast. Your host, Brent Bilski, a.k.a. Double B. A ton of good stuff to get into, as always. We are down to four in the NBA. L.A. Lakers versus Denver Nuggets. Boston versus Miami, as my boys in Golden State. And others, unfortunately, you know, did what they were going to do. This was just kind of what I expected. Um, unfortunately, a lot of things came full circle, including the trust the process out in Philadelphia done. But coming full circle, just want to get right into it because this was it's amazing. It, you know, it was one of the first things we started with here when I started doing this podcast. And he did it again. John Morant. When keeping it real goes wrong. Uh, he showed a gun again. I, I, it, and it shouldn't be a shock to anyone. I'm just going to come out. Let's just start with the John Morant situation. John Morant has been suspended again after another video shows the Grizzly star with a gun. You're just going to have to, at this point, just take my word on some of this here. So to give you an idea, there, this is kind of a crossroads, because I flat told you, this should be a surprise to no one. It, it, you know, I, I get that a lot of people are shocked by this, or that a lot of people are like, how could this man possibly be this stupid again? I just don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. You're going to have to take my word two ways on this. There's only a few things in life I know, but basketball for one, I mean, again, I played it my whole life. I made it to the college level. I didn't get to pros, but I was around and played with people who did pro. I also talked about it again on radio for the next 10 years. I won awards doing it. Most people will tell you it is beyond my wheelhouse. It's what I understand. It's what I know. In the last couple years, and I'm not proud to say this, but it's just part of my life. I had to go get sober. I had to go to rehab for more than six days, unlike John Morant, and I will tell you why. That was just obviously PR nonsense. But you combine these two things together, and I'm just going to have to, you're going to have to trust me a little bit. I know what I am saying here. This is why from the beginning, when I told you guys that John Morant did not learn a damn thing, and I really don't think that he's going to go forward with, oh, I understand now, and I'm going to do better. And he didn't, and it shouldn't have shocked you. Man, I'm tired of being right. And I, I feel a little bad on this one because he's starting to really get into the blowing it category here, but it shouldn't be a surprise. Of all the things that you could say about, oh my God, I cannot believe it. This is so crazy. What a story. What does this mean for the Memphis Grizzlies? You can say all of that. If you know anything about this topic, if you know anything about what it takes to to change, to recover, to do anything like that. This really shouldn't have been that big of a shock to your system. It shouldn't have really been that big of like, oh my God, I can't believe it, yada, yada, yada. So to give you an idea, I'll just tell you one more time. Yes, Memphis Grizzlies have once again suspended John Morant from all team activities after another video uh, surfaced of him holding a gun. The Grizzlies have announced the suspension pending a league review just two months after they suspended him before because he had an Instagram Live where he snitched on himself holding a gun. When keeping it real goes wrong. Now, at least this time on the self-snitching, it was his friend. Now, his friend, Mr. Pack, just happens to be the one who, from many incidents again before, was the guy who they had to suspend because of the Pacers incident. He's been banned from the FedEx Forum in Memphis for a year. That was the whole one, if you remember, where basically they got into an altercation. Pack apparently stepped on the court. I didn't know this part, and uh, tried to get into a fight with the Pacers players. Then after it, Pacers staff reported from Jaws' car there were red lasers that happened to most likely resemble a gun sight, you know, a laser sight on a gun. Laser. So it's just, um, yeah, this is, uh, I'll, I'll just show you the video here. We'll get more into the details of it, but in case you missed the video, 
this is the latest one. And I had to take down the music a little bit here because it was, you know, they were listening to some rap song about dead ninja this, dead ninja that, I'm going to do da-da-da. Typical, you know, whatever. But they're in the car. It's him and Mr. Pack, who, again, has been suspended for a year for the previous alleged gun incident. They're riding along after everything else that happened in his life. And, yeah, he's, he's he, of course, he, he does understand. He didn't have to understand. He had nothing to learn from the previous so-called punishments that went down. So, here you go. Here's Ja once again flashing a pistol. And I have to say, I guess, allegedly, but we'll put the still shut up. He's, he's holding a gun. So, there you go. They're riding along. Boys having a good time. Got your enabler, bad influence right there with you, showing the blicky symbol, doing the finger pointing on Instagram, and there it was. And there it was. They tried real quick, if you notice. You only catch it for a second. They tried real good in order to try to hide it, and I'll just go back and keep showing it here. Here, where exactly is it? There it is. There it is. Nice still shot. Make sure I'll leave it there so the editors know to kind of get a look. And yes, it's a little blurry, but that is Mr. Morant. That is definitely not anything other than what it looks like. I will continue to say allegedly for legal reasons, but do we have any reason to believe that's not an actual gun? And that he hasn't once again put himself in trouble. And don't even, I'm not even going to get into the stupid arguments of, well, what about Second Amendment rights and this and that? And it's not like other people don't have guns. And if this was an actor or if this was a different skin color, nah, 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 nah. This don't, or do it. Do it if you want. And maybe you can help him continue to go down this path of he's just going to blow it all. If that's the stupid takes you want to have, go ahead and have them. I'm not really going to address them other than right now because they're stupid. I'm sorry. It's a dumb take. It's a bad idea. And you just you don't really get what's going on. That's dopey talk. That's dopey dumb dumb talk. (laughs) But you can see it clear as day. That is him holding up at least what looks very, very much like another gun. It was at least a little bigger and a little more representative of I might actually do something with this than the shotgun Willie's incident from a couple months ago. In case you forgot that one or never saw the video, I'll go ahead and put it up. This was the first time he did it. So he's at a strip club in Denver, 5 in the morning after a road loss, which ended up being pretty... Uh, good foreshadowing for the Memphis Grizzlies losing to the Lakers and losing some important road games because they didn't set a precedent of having the ability to stay focused on the road, which they did address far too late, much like they addressed the Joss situation far too late and not strongly enough. But here you go, in case you didn't see it, uh, this was the first one. Look at me, look at me, boom. There it is. I'm not going to play the whole... I mean, you could see, I guess, more of the video if you want. This is him after a loss, really uh, taking it in, being a leader. And look, he's not the first NBA player after a loss to decide to go look at some boobies and have a little fun here. I mean, I can't really blame him too much for that. But just in case you didn't see it, let's go ahead and hit the play button one more time and get to where he flashes it. And I want to say it was right. There it is. Another good still shot. I will once again take a second for the editors to be able to zoom in and see. There is nothing more than what that is. That is Mr. Morant. That is him holding a gun, which at this point he said, oh, it wasn't mine. It wasn't mine, Your Honor. I, I mean, this is now that I, mean, I hope he doesn't try that one again. That uh, I have no idea this wasn't mine. I have no idea how these guns keep getting in my hands and how I keep having to deal with suspensions. None of this is my fault. I don't even get what's really going on here. I hope he doesn't go down that route. Your Honor, I object! And why is that, Mr. Reed? Because it's devastating to my case! Overruled. Good call! Yeah, it'd be a good call at this point to kind of go ahead and let that one go. Go ahead and let that one go, dog. But, so, yeah. So, now you've seen both. You see the pictures. You see that he did it again. And uh, this was Saturday with his friend Devontae Pack. He flashed a handgun while singing along with a rap song. The video has now been deleted. Again, way too late. We already got the evidence. You effed up one more time. Um, This is after, of course, in March when he entered a counseling program, a rehab program. And I will tell you why six days or eight days or whatever it was is a joke. It it was it was a PR stunt and a joke. And you really should have known better. But, uh, yeah, at the time, after his whole eight days of, you know, self change and 
you know, all that good stuff. He basically said in an ESPN interview, he understands, quote, what he has to lose, and he would try to be more responsible. This, of course, was the like the culmination of many incidents that happened, including the fight with a 17-year-old, going to his sister's game and getting in a fight, going and, you know, sticking up for mama because she got in a fight at the shoe store where there was a gun involved, the Pacers staff. No kind of saying it's your law. Mama's right. Like, uh, we could do it a little bit more in a second here, but he was up. he's up to like six now in six months. And don't forget next season where he will now be suspended and only question is for how long of a period of time and how much now is the NBA not able to give him this maybe you deserve another shot and, and this kind of understanding of this dude is just not hearing the message. He just doesn't seem to kind of grasp anything going on. You just don't get it, do you? You don't. But he's on his way to uh, his five-year $194 million max contract extension, which – could have been another $32 million this year if he would have made the all-NBA team, which he was not voted to. What you can, you know, probably attribute to a lot of things that happened, uh, whether the voting or whatever, and the reasoning for it, but that was $32 million right down the drain. And it's gone. Um, you know, he now has his Nike and Powerade sponsorships again in question. Powerade has already shown a little hesitance when the last time this dude flashed a gun that they retreated from some advertising they were doing. Now I would got to say that's in serious jeopardy. And it's gone. Nike, you know, who knows? Maybe they'll try their best to stick with it. But it, it, it's the old, uh, you know, what's the uh, the George Bush misquote of uh, fool me once, show Shame on me, fool me twice. Uh, you know, it's really foolish, or you got to use strategy. I, I forget what the actual quote was, but you know, exactly as far as like, you know, once maybe the second time you did it again, dude. It's just, ah, you know, can you do? What can you do? Uh, there were so many signs that you really should have paid attention to, and I guess that's where I'll get into now. Um, this, this shouldn't be a shock to anyone because if you've been in this kind of situation, you know what you see and you understand, uh, again, I had to do this. I had to spend 60 days and go through a rehabilitation program that was, you know, real and serious and you learned a lot. And what I learned in, in my time there, besides the fact that when you have serious problems and Ja does, he has problems here, he needs help. Um, he has the help. And that was one thing I learned is that, man, you know, trying to get over and really make changes in your life, it really is important. And it, uh, it has been done without it. But when you, when you have a strong circle and opportunities and things to get to places that are willing to help you and people that are willing to help you and the opportunity to get that help, it really is, is significant in most people getting it done. I recognize that in my own life now, almost two years sober, that that was a huge, huge part in playing into being the man that I am today. But the other part is you either get it, you've either hit that bottom or you don't. And if you just don't get it, you just don't get it, and it's just not time. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. The whole thing, and I ranted and raved and bitched and moaned early on from this start of just doing this podcast. John Morant was one of the first subjects that I tackled, and I was not quiet. I, in fact, screamed. He's not learning a damn thing. I do not see anything positive about where he is going right now. And I don't think in the future you're going to see this changed person that you're kind of fingers crossed hoping that was going to be. There was no signs of it. There was not enough of an understanding himself. There was not enough real help. There was too much enabling. There was too much of a pass. There was too many excuses. There was way too many things to where all of this should not today honestly be a surprise you you see this type of stuff you, you know it, it it was fascinating at first but now i've gotten a little jaded and cynical you would watch people that you were either court ordered or their families asked them to go or for whatever reason when i say they would not make it out of the parking lot to relapse i am not joking with you 
They would literally be like, they just got out. They've just spent all this time, but they didn't hear the message. They didn't understand. They would be either in the parking lot or like a mile away from the place that just tried to tell them everything they needed to know and go get high as a kite. It is so interesting. You just kind of go, wow, that's that's just kind of, if you, if you don't have the change, it, it, it shouldn't be as weird as it is. Is this real life? So I'm going to do this again. I called. I used to have this, and I'm, I'm bringing it back when I get it in a need to. Uh, called shots. Called shots. I, I told you this, and I'm going to just, – just in order to prove and to make the point. I said this two months ago. Two months ago. So one more time, I'm bringing back what I call called shots. And uh, – oh, I almost messed up my sounder. Got to have it. Got to have it. Shots fired. Shots fired. He's calling his shot. I used to take the time to do the video editing, and that was kind of a pain in the rear end. And so instead, what I'm going to do is just show you a beautiful picture, cartoon rendering, since it's just proving once again that I'm right and I am a genius, and I told you. See, I done told you. I done told you. I'll just do a cartoon rendering of me on a giant phoenix in a tuxedo t-shirt with a flaming microphone as I play once again. This is from two months ago. You can either listen to this or you don't have to because this is so much bigger than sports. This is just life in general. You will either understand what I said then and what I'm saying now or you won't. But this next little minute or so is really Bigger than anything than a basketball score or a football NFL draft, anything like that. If you want to understand what happened with Ja, what may happen to people that either involve you know your love circle around you or yourself, pay attention right now. I told you this two months ago. So in case you either in this yourself, you want to get through certain parts of your life, or you just see anyone that you're worried about, the three things you're going to hear repeatedly until they understand the law of the common denominator that all of these reasons they could all be true will not change the outcome of the path you're going down it's not my fault you gotta understand and i'm still doing better than so and so you will hear those over and over and i heard every one of these with john moran same thing oh it's not his fault it was security it was sticking up for his mama he was doing this it was the teenagers you know looking for lawsuits no 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 it you gotta understand john Morant is a young kid. He's young. He's young. He's young. Doesn't matter that, you know, he has an opportunity. Doesn't matter that he just signed a $190 million contract extension. Doesn't matter that he's got endorsement deals and a camp and people around him. And now he's basically got a whole team on his back where he is the leader and he needs to show he's young. He's 23. He's being a kid. You know, he's just doing little things. You got to understand it's the age that's the problem. And then we finally got to, well, he hasn't been arrested. He's not going to jail. At least he's still in league. Hey, he's still, you know, a multiple time all-star. He's still one of the richest men in the, you know, in, in the world, as far as if you look at net worth and especially what he's going to get in the next few years, you know, he's got a lot of money. He came from this. He's doing that. I mean, at least he's not arrested or in jail. All of these eventually run thin and all of these eventually will bite you in your ass as John Moran, unfortunately has found out the demon will come for you in so many different interesting ways. It's so interesting how much uh, I call it the demon, the bad, whatever doesn't help you or anyone you know do what they need to do. It'll try anything. It'll come for you. It'll use your past. It'll use your trauma. It will use outside influences, especially if you get to a John Morant level. It'll use sex. It'll use pressure. It'll use drugs. It'll use... You know, whatever it can get to, to get you to make those three excuses for yourself. And I'm sorry, I will say this again. He is currently the path. He reminds me so much of Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson. There you go. That was two months ago. I, I am the smartest man alive. <laughs> And it's not even really that I'm smart on this one. I mean, some of it is that I'm just, you know, I'm good at this. But I've been in this. I've seen this. I've watched this happen. I have watched people continually. I mean, 90% of the people that you meet in rehab facilities do not make it or relapse. And you can see every reason why. The demon is so strong. It gets a hold of you. And if, if you haven't tackled it or gotten it off your shoulder, it's going to continue to happen. This really wasn't a surprise because there was nothing done proactively 
to cause a real difference. And even after, even during interviews and stuff, I was watching this kid and I'm just shaking my head going, yeah, this, this is, this isn't the end. This isn't the end. Um, and as far as the demon itself goes, I mean, Jalen Rose was probably one of the realest ones on this talked about the, that, you know, like I said, it can come for you in different ways. Like for me, I'll tell you mine. Mine personally was the, um, there were certain things I wanted to do in life and then I didn't make it and I failed. And it's not that it's the worst thing in the world, but when you were in my world and you were young and you think that, you know, every, every life thing that happens to you is the biggest thing of all time. Uh, my demon came for me saying you're a failure. You blew your opportunities and you, uh, you're a loser now. You have no reason to get up. You have no reason to try again because the fact is you missed your window. You blew it all. You're a loser. You don't deserve this. You don't deserve that. That's how mine came for me. Jalen's version of what the demon is for Ja was a little different, but obviously it's a different situation because he's rich and he is a very good basketball player and he does have still a lot going for him. All he's blown so far is the $32 million from the All-NBA and a chance to real real chance to win a championship this year. So far, that's all he's blown, which in the grand scheme of things, I guess, isn't that big. And then all the money he'll lose last year and maybe another chance next year to win an NBA title. But Jalen's version, and this was right after it too, of where his demons are, I think is pretty close. And a lot of times, guys, as I mentioned, fame can be a drug. And I don't know what type of pain that he deals with and type of anxiety that he has or what types of substances that he may be using. And I'm glad in this statement that he owned that I need to make changes for me. Because as the leader, as the breadwinner, you control the environment. The people that are around you, you select. And a lot of times, unfortunately, and Wilbon alluded to this also, when we start to get fame, when we start to get money, then we try to feel like we're keeping it real. Like we're trying to be down now. We're trying to be tough now. We're trying to be hard now. But you made it. And once you make it, your job is to uplift, to enlighten. And I'm glad this actually happened at this point of his life. Yeah. And like he said, it's the fame. It's the idea that now that I've got this money, oh, man, I can't forget where I came from. And he didn't even really come from that. He came from a small town in South Carolina. He had a mom and dad. He did not have this rough, hardcore life. And usually when you see the ones in the, I mean, don't trust me for it. Trust ones that have been around and really seen things who say like, dude, the ones who flex it after they've gotten the money. When keeping it real goes wrong. It, it ain't even real. They're, they're pretending. They're fakers. They're phonies. They're tourists. The, the, the ones that have really gone through it will tell you like, bro, you don't brag about it after you've gotten out of it. If anything, you're just grateful that you did. You're one of the few. Same thing in getting sober. Like, you're one of the few. I went to so You, you got to understand. I have been in therapy sessions where I'll make friends. Like, I'll give you, I won't say his name. There was a guy who, uh, it was only like five or six of us in this therapy group that I was in. And when I say it was one week where we just discovered that we actually grew up, we were the same age, we lived on the same street, on the same street growing up. We went to the same places, knew a lot of the same people. And so the next week came by and I was all excited to kind of, you know, find out more about him, maybe make a new friend here. And uh, the reason, you know, I didn't get to do that is because he's gone. And it's gone. Uh, it, it, like that. It happens that freaking quick. And you get kind of used to it. It's almost the Joker from the, um, the, 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 the Dark Knight Rises, excuse me, when he says after a while when things start going according to plan, you kind of you either get used or adjusted or your sympathy kind of gets lost when you start getting to know people you shake their hands and you get to hear their stories and in therapy you do get to hear a lot of people's personal stories and you ask where they are the next week and he wasn't the only one that was just the most significant to me because like i said same age grew up on the same street everything else gone and it's gone it can come and go that quick things can change just that fast and he wasn't learning i mean besides the fact that he did it again if you listen to him talk he he would tell you i mean he was giving you every sign on the planet here and i'm not gonna hammer this all the way home but i do want to make this point because this was again full circle to where I mean, I started, I started with this and I was talking about this and I was trying to explain <laughs> it ain't there, man. I heard his interviews afterwards, after his whole six to eight days, which again is a joke. 
It's a joke. If you have anyone who really needs help and they tried to do it over a weekend or in a week, you wasted your money. No offense, but you have. Um, so after his six days of rehabilitation, after all the things that happened, he came out with Jalen, actually, again, and was doing an interview and said this. And I was like, here you go. Here's, again, what you need to know, everything I needed to hear about John Morant. You at the spot, Shotgun Willies. I've been there. You are holding a gun. And we both know how dangerous that can be. Whose gun were you holding? Well, the gun wasn't mine. Um, no, I, it's not who I am. I don't condone and, you know, any type of violence. Um, but I take, you know, full responsibility, you know, for my actions. Um, made a you know, bad mistake. Um, and I can see uh, the image, you know, that I, I painted, you know, over myself, you know, with my recent mistakes, but you know, in the future, um, I'm gonna show everybody who John really is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm about, and um, you know, change this narrative. He did say, that other than I'll change the narrative, he said, I'm going to show you who I am and what I'm about. So that point, he did get right. But all the stuff I've heard, I've seen this, I've heard this, I've heard all this. You got to understand, it's not my fault. Look at me, son. It's not your fault. This is a negative image that it's just being portrayed. I mean, after the one now and the new video with his new with his buddy Pac, who had gotten him in trouble before with the guns and the lasers being pointed at the Pacers game. Lasers. When they didn't get any sort of actual punishment because the NBA couldn't prove it with like video evidence, he went to tweeting and said, quote, did a investigation seen they were capping still let this article come out to paint this negative image of me and my fam and banned my brother from home games for a year. Unbelievable. And dude, I'll, I'll ignore some of the quotes he's had. Like, I need to be more smarter. And I mean... Uh, you know, I, they did a uh, investigation. Didn't you like graduate from, from college in Moran state? I mean, no! dude, it's, it's basic English dog. And I understand there's a way you want to talk, but I mean, g give me a freaking break. Um, but I mean, yeah, this, this was, you know, he kept trying to say, this is a negative image. This isn't me. This is the media portraying this. This is other things. Gun wasn't mine. Na da 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 da. In six months, starting with the incident at the mall at the finish line, starting in this was in July, or this was actually this one started about a year ago. Mom was at a finish line, got in an argument, and it's funny the irony that they called it the finish line because this is actually the beginning point of kind of the meltdown. He gets the mom gets in an argument with an employee. Josh shows up with like eight deep. The, the guy who worked there said that there was talk of guns, when do you get off, all that type of stuff. Then July 26, he got in a fight with a teenager that he claimed was self-defense because most NBA stars have a hard time beating up a 17-year-old in a pickup basketball game in his backyard. At that point, the teenager with multiple bumps and welts on his head even said afterwards that Job Morant came out after the fight with a gun in his waistband and was making threats. Once again, though, that couldn't be proven. Josh said it was all nonsense. People tried to say oh, it wasn't him. No, 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 no. Then after that was the one where his buddy, his new friend, or been his friend, and his best enabler, Mr. Pack, was at a Pacers game. He gets on the floor. He did have courtside seats and starts talking crap to play Pacers players. Afterwards, there's an altercation, and then there are lasers being pointed from Jaws' car, but once again, NBA could not prove that it was him, and he got away with it again. Then you go to Shotgun Willie's. Oh, in between that, there was also the fight at the volleyball game, sticking up for his sister because there was some altercation there. And once again, not his fault. He had to stick up for his sister. Then he does finally the one at Shotgun Willie's where he flashes the gun. And, you know, of course, the gun wasn't his. He doesn't condone that. He doesn't understand. Once again, an investigation, he was able to get away with it. They could not prove that it was his and that there was anywhere in a team facility where he actually had it. So, once again, got a pass. Goes to the six days of rehab, goes through his little BS suspension. They end up getting upset by the Lakers. And before the playoffs are even done, he is once again on an Instagram of his own doing, this time with his best buddy, flashing a gun, and now he is facing really big boy suspension. Okay. I, I think I've made my point, but here's the last thing, and this is something that someone in Josh camp that he's taken serious needs to go ahead and tell him. 
There is a really real quote about when you'll make changes and if and when we'll ever see him make changes. And I'll be able to know it when I hear it. I'm telling you, you you learn very quickly. Within 30 seconds to 30 minutes, I can basically get an idea of if you're really willing to go through the necessary steps and if you're at the point of a bottom, whatever your bottom is, and that's different for everyone, but if you're at the point where you're going to make a change, you will find out this. This is the realest quote you're going to hear today, and I'm going to tell you what it is right now. And I read, If the fear of change finally is less than the fear of your present situation, that is when you will actually make your change. What does that mean? That the fear of change finally becomes less than the fear of your present situation. That is when you will actually make the changes necessary to become a new and different person. What that means is basically when you finally, and this takes a while, if you get to the point to where the unknown to where the change, to where all of your fears of like, uh, I don't know if this is going to work. What are people going to think? I don't know if I can handle this life. I don't know if I can handle not having the things that I had before, the crutches I had before. I, you know, all that's foreign, that's new, that's scary. I'd rather stay in my present situation because as bad as it is, at least I know what's here. I know how to navigate what is going on in my life. When you finally hit the point where you go, you know what? I don't know what's on the other side of that door, but it can't be any worse than where I'm at. That's when something will happen. When you finally hit that aha hallelujah moment of like, man, I don't know what that life is. I have no idea if it's going to be better or if it's going to be worse. The only thing I know is that this current situation sucks and I am on a pattern of just crap that's either going to lead me to be in I lose everything, I'm dead, or I'm in jail, and I just don't want to do this anymore. I need to do something different, and I don't know what that is, but it can't be much worse than what I'm doing. So I'm finally going to listen. I'm going to surrender to give me the advice I need, tell me what I need to do, and I will follow every step I need to do to get it done because I don't know anything else. I I really can't, but I know I can't do this anymore. He never got there. He never got there with a bullcrap little six-game suspension. He never got there because he kept getting away with the legal ramifications of not coming back home to roost. And next year, if you really care about him, if you're a big fan or you're a Grizzlies that tries to care enough about your players, short of, I mean, maybe let him come back at the end of the year, I personally would say you're gone for a year. And, uh, I mean, if, if, you, if you're looking long-term, it depends. If you only care, if you only care, and most people only care about like what's going to happen as far as if you're a Grizzlies fan, you want to win a championship. You can't do it without John Morant, as you found out. Him even playing hurt through the Lakers series, there wasn't enough there. But if you're someone in the, I really want Ja to get it. Uh, until I would say honestly, you are gone for the season, with the caveat and the knowing in my head of I'm going to wait and see. I'm going to wait and see if he actually goes and understands what's happened, if he goes and gets the help, and if he finally comes back with a humble understanding of, dude, I am not invincible. I am not this gangster. I'm not this. I am just another guy who's got some talent and has worked really hard to get here, and I don't want to lose this. I'm watching everything slip away, and it sucks, and I don't want to do this anymore. I am willing to stop all the activities, I'm willing to change my friend's situation. I'm willing to change my inner circle. I'm willing to do what it takes because this current situation is not working for me. Until he gets to that point, I wouldn't let him back. And I don't know legally how much they can do if players' unions can kick in and all sorts of nonsense. But if you actually give a crap about him and you're tired of him trying to be this fake gangster and you're tired of hearing about him being suspended and you're tired of watching him piss it all away. When keeping it real goes wrong. Until he comes back and really understands the ramifications of what he's done, he won't change. And same thing in people in your life. If they haven't come to you and just be like, dude, I don't know what to do, but it can't keep doing what I'm doing. And I really get it. Until they really get it, they will continue to screw up. There you go. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. What I do get in coming full circle is that the Boston Celtics are so similar to the Golden State Warriors. I'm just going to go ahead and smoothly transition into an entire another situation here. Um, the Jason Tatum 51 points was so disappointing for me. Steph Curry's Game 7 record of 50 points in a Game 7 
like I said, life comes quickly, man. Life comes quickly. I was all, you know, happy for them. They had gotten past Sacramento. They were against a Lakers team they could have and should have beaten. They didn't. And Steph record's already gone because last night, Jason Tatum went ballistic and scored 51 points and destroyed the Philadelphia 76ers and probably blew up that team and franchise for good. Tatum's been unstoppable. Step back, another three. Punch it in! Jason Tatum is scorching right now! Tatum was just filthy. Was just filthy everywhere. Matter of fact, uh, there was another one. They compared the 51 for Tatum, the new Game 7 record, to Steph Curry's 50. Kind of went back and forth here. I mean, both are great performances, but in the end, Tatum's got the last lap, and so did the Celtics from their finals matchup last year. Golden State now gone, and Boston moving on. And most likely and should be the favorites to beat Miami and get back to the NBA Finals. But they put a little of it back-to-back, and because I'm a Curry and a Warriors fan, I thought this was cute. Step back, three-pointer, got it! Mm. He's got 30 already! So many of those were right in Embiid's grill. It was just, it was a fantastic performance by Jason Tatum. But I, I, of course, got to see a little bit of my boy here. He fires Curry. Curry hanging on to that pivot foot. Scoop lamp is up, it's good! I hope so. That was, that was several feet short. Oh, Tatum on the drive. Seconds to go on the clock. It's a touch pass to Steph Curry, a guy that's already dominant all afternoon long. Gets a look. So interesting, too, because both teams are so similar and both superstars have kind of the similar situations going on. But Tatum, by the way, it was Mother's Day. Did dedicate stuff to his mom. I thought that was nice. Um, game seven on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, especially my mom. You know, so I had to put on a special performance for her. For you, like you said, the season was hanging in the balance until your. Yeah, so that was nice. I'm say that happiness is from magic rays of sunshine that come down when you're feeling blue. Also, I have another one came up, gave her a hug too. So that was a nice moment, you know, coming around to the mom raising her child, wondering what they're going to be. And he sets the game seven record and puts them in a pretty much the position other than the Denver Nuggets as the favorites now to win the NBA championship. And after the post game dedicating, gives mom a big hug. This was nice. 51 points for Jason Tatum. A hug for mom on Mother's Day. I think they'll celebrate tonight quite well. Got to love it. Mom's, you know, probably a, a young age saying, my baby's going to make the NBA. And everyone's like, yeah, okay, mama. No kind of saying this. You're wrong. Mom is right. Unfortunately, the Golden State Warriors situation was a little bit different. They just got destroyed. And it was just, it, I don't, I'm, it's still too fresh. Like, it's going to take me a minute. Congratulations to L.A. I do think Denver kicks your ass. I really do, and that's not just my heart talking. That's also the fact that they have home court, and they have the size. They have the size necessary, and the players, besides Jokic, they also have guys like DeAndre Jordan on the bench. Michael Porter Jr. is very big. You're not going to bully your way through like you did with Golden State. They got some big dudes down there. That's a huge bitch. And I think your comeuppance is coming. You got to go against a flawed Memphis that was dealing with John Morant, Dylan Brooks, and all sorts of stuff. Then you got to go against the Warriors team, who I loved, but I kind of, like I said, prepared myself for the fact that they were going to get embarrassed, and they did, because they're just they're too tiny. They're just too damn small. The Lakers were too big. They bullied them, and it just is what it is. That's a huge bitch. Steve Kerr annoyed the crap out of me. I do want to – I'll quickly get into this, and I'm going to have some fun – and call it a day here. Steve Kerr, God dang it, you don't get it either. You know, same thing. Same thing of the whole John Morant, uh, if I, you know, you think like, God, you really went in on that. It, there's a point to be made of like, until the current is worse than the future and the uncertainty of the future that you're not going to change. I heard Kerr talk, and he, he doesn't get it either. He doesn't get, the fact is, it was a lot of your stubbornness and a lot of the things that you did that caused in a lot of ways, Steph Curry, you kind of blew another year of Steph Curry here. So after the game, Kerr talked about it, and he was right, and then he wasn't. Here we go. To be uh, to be fair, I think um, this team probably, you know, ultimately um, maxed out. Um, I think, uh, you know, we were 
barely in the playoff picture for most of the year. So to, to make that push, to get there, uh, to win an epic first round series, and then you know to give the Lakers um, you know a, a fight in this series and have our chances um, that puts us in the top among the top you know eight teams in the league. That's uh, that's probably where where we should be. Uh, this is not a championship team. You know, it's, it, if we were, we'd be moving on. There's some truth to that, and there isn't. They weren't a championship team, but the idea that you were maxed out against the Lakers team is nonsense, and that you, you know, just maxed out a team that you had. You didn't max them out. That's dopey talk. That's dopey <laughs> dumb dumb talk. The, the, the fact is, you were stubborn on your small ball. You got crushed inside. You decided to sit Kevon Looney in the games that mattered in games four and five that were more significant in games three, four, and five. You didn't see him play more until the final one when it was too late. Um, you didn't play Kaminga at all. You, you went to your extremely small lineups more than you did anything else. And even when they weren't working, you didn't adjust because in your head it's the way to go. And you've won that way before. And the current need and the present is not – as scary as the future of you having to admit you need a big, you stubborn ass mule. Whatever, I do what I want. And unfortunately, it's going to come down most likely in Golden State to Clay or Dre. I, I really don't see both of them being able to hang around. Everyone wants to go after Jordan Poole, and fair enough, because Jordan Poole was a nightmare, and his immaturity has become more and more of a forefront. You know, a lot of ways he got to be the victim when Draymond sucker punched him at the start of the season and Draymond came across as the bad guy, and rightfully so. But as Jordan's performance has become more and more piss poor and his decision-making and others, you're starting to get videos leaking now of other times. Like, this was a quick one of him on the sideline of, uh, you know, just this isn't like, this obviously isn't being focused on the game. I'll say this much. He saw some girl in the stands and does this. Look at her. Uh, uh, I can't even do it that fast. Uh, I couldn't be in Scarface. Man, you got the do the, uh, the girls. They love it. Smack. Yeah, Jordan Poole apparently can flip that tongue. Good for him, I guess, or good for his partner. I don't know if the middle of the game's the time to do it, but that's what he was doing. So Jordan Poole has shown a lot of immaturity here. But Clay Thompson, Game 6 Clay, and that was a microcosm, again, of the bitching I said of, like, dude, they kept all year, wait till the playoffs come. Just wait till the playoffs come, and we're going to pull out the old 2022 Warriors and just bring it out here. It's, it was nonsense. It didn't work. And Clay was a, just, a, a, just atrocious. 3 of 19. 3 of 19. 3 of 19. Game 6 Clay was 3 of 19. <laughs> Jesus age Christ. Even he, when he finally looked at the box score after the game was over, I think understood, like, this might have been my last big game six uh, in a Warriors jersey, or at least there's a possibility, and this is not the way I wanted to go out, especially being from L.A. and wanting to put on a big performance. Three of 19? Good Lord. Look at Clay's face. Says it all. Mm, yeah, you were that bad. You were that bad. Clay Thompson, the last few games, was just not there. Jordan Poole wasn't there. Steph Curry couldn't do it by himself. Kerr was too stubborn on multiple issues. The Warriors organization in general, I'm getting off into it now with Andrew Wiggins, thinking that he could take the months off that he did, even if it was family tragedy related. If you want to be honest, there is a little bit, too, of the idea that he could come back and just be Wiggins that he was last year when you really needed him. There was too many times all year with all their problems where they kept kind of saying, well, when it's really time to do it. And again, just didn't get it. Don't understand. Just don't get it, do you? You don't. I mean, there's a reason. The regular season is not just to make money and be a pain in the ass to these players so they can just earn $150 million and not have to actually do anything but the playoffs. The regular season, there's a reason the top seeds are usually, and just like this year, most likely it's going to be the Denver Nuggets, Boston Celtics, one and two. There is a reason 
that we have the regular season. The reason why focusing on it is important. It's just the precedent being set. It is the chemistry being built. And injuries can happen at any point in time, as we found out in these playoffs. So the idea of taking the time off, not playing them, resting them, and turning it all on and hitting the switch, you know, you've been weighed, measured, and found wanting. You're not the only ones. The Philadelphia 76ers also found out the hard way with a lot of their, you know, oh, we got to worry about load management and this and everything else. You needed to really focus on team chemistry. As you saw afterwards, Joel Embiid saying out loud that it can't be just him and James and that basically blamed his teammates. <laughs> ain't it, man. It ain't it, you know. So there you go as far as the NBA. Like I said, my favorites are now, I, I'm going to, it's Boston-Denver. I mean, short of Jimmy Butler can make it a series. They are 1-1 in the last two years in a row. But this is a new new year, new teams. I, I mean, of course, Boston with home court, their depth and their experience, they should be able to do it. And the Denver Nuggets probably should eliminate the Lakers in like five. The Lakers are not that good. They've gotten to go against two flawed teams that had a lot of issues that did not involve playing basketball. Warriors was at least mostly basketball, some chemistry and stubbornness and everything else. They were also just too short. But I don't think the Lakers get past Denver. I don't think the Heat get past Celtics. So Celtics Nuggets in one of the most boring finals, most likely in NBA history. It'll be very low rated. But not much you can do except what you can, you know, like I said, serenity prayer, accept the things I can change, the courage to change, the, uh, the accept the things I can't, the wisdom, the difference or whatever. It'll most likely not be that much more of an exciting NBA season once we get to the finals, it won't be that fun to watch. Not really a lot of star power. Maybe a little in Boston, but, I mean, Tatum Jokic is not moving the meter. Just not. And that's probably what it's going to be. I would love to see L.A., Miami, because LeBron, Miami, the rematch, going to Miami, all that good stuff. Butler, the whole thing would be beautiful. I don't think it's going to happen. I do think it's time, though, to have some fun. Call today and get to the video. you seen it, <laughs> you seen it. Don't look at me. Don't look at me, little puppet. Have you seen this? Have you read about this? Again, for this part specifically, I do do a lot of stuff during the broadcast and the actual meat of this, but this is specifically just some stuff at the end to have fun, kind of cleanse my palate, have a laugh. Go to Tricky Guy Sports on our YouTube. We put all these up on YouTube, so if you're just listening right now and you want to see these, these are more necessarily just visual. Like, you're just going to have to kind of... Go to look up Tricky Guy Sports, search it, find it, like and subscribe if you'd like to as well, and you can enjoy this last part with us. Um, I don't know who this kid is, but I'm going to give him a lot of credit. This is just an amazing ability to stay balanced, and I don't know how he pulled. This was by itself. This was almost as good as Tatum's 51. This is pretty fascinating here. Some kid doing it, some high school pep rally thing, and like you, you run and you put your hat on the bat and spin around and get dizzy and try to run again. How this kid stayed on his feet is beyond me. Absolutely beyond me. Watch this. Yeah, nice long strides. We're having fun. We're doing a little student race. Let me do the spinny spin spin. Look at this. Watch this part. <laughs> <laughs> that was impressive. I, I mean, I don't even care. I don't care who you are. Actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. I got to see that last part one more time. So here he goes. Right from here, how he was able to stay just... <laughs> one more time for the kids at home, sure. Spinny's been spin. <laughs> That would actually be kind of frightening, like, if that was some dude doing that, like, you know, like, if you were just walking down the street and you saw someone just and somehow able to stay balanced, you'd think it's like some zombie on meth or something. Pretty frightening, some ways. Not as frightening as this. Has anyone ever done the Reface apps? I've actually played with these, 
And I can get to a whole rant about uh, how the world's going to end because artificial intelligence has taken over everything and we haven't watched enough sci-fi movies to understand. We're just creating our own demise. But in the meantime, there is some entertaining stuff. And one of the things you can do is take any face and put it on celebrities and videos and stuff. Um, a la The Running Man, it'll eventually be used to make false videos to blackmail and put people in situations that they weren't even in. But um, for now, it's just fun. Like this is speaking of it's just the reason I thought of scary and frightening is because whoever did this, they put their baby's face on bodybuilder Ronnie Coleman. Do you remember Ronnie? Nah, he was even bigger than Arnold. Arnold had to be like, oh, my God, you are so huge, Ronnie. What do you do? Do you take the roids? Do you take what do you do in order to get to the pump? I want to get this pumped as you. So they put his body with a baby's face. And good God, if this isn't straight out of a nightmare, I don't know what is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? <sighs> like that is straight out of the cell with uh, Vince Vaughn of like where they created these nightmarish or just some horror movie. Can you imagine that asking you for its Baba and you have its Baba and you don't want to give it up? <laughs> Look at the monster that thing created. Just fun AI app. You can anyone can do this. Only one of the scariest things I've ever seen. What else did I want to bring you here at the end to have a little fun? Um, oh, this was good. In case anyone's thinking of a fun way to get to a uh, like for graduation. When I graduated in high school, I did the. Actually, the sounder I use. I did the I am. I put my hands up in the air and screamed, "I am the smartest man alive." I am the smartest man alive. <laughs> that was from Billy Madison. Um, this kids though decided to take a game and a contest and put it on the screen. I thought this was great. Went to paper, rock, scissors. Austin Hunter Craft. Matthew. Ryan. Oh, anyone. Didn't get to find out till later, but he won via the screen. Scissors beats paper. Austin Hunter Craft. Matthew Ryan. <laughs> I'll carry you. That's smart. That's funny right there. Uh, what else did I have? Oh, this one. Oh, my, oh mm. Mm. I don't know, and this is going to get me riled up a little again. I don't know if this was planted. I don't. Mm. I don't know. I don't know, but I don't like it. I don't like what I'm seeing here. Okay, so in case any of y'all have seen the movie How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, has anyone seen that movie? It's uh, Kate Hudson and McConaughey, and this is before Lincoln, and this is after the all right, all right, all right. This is when McConaughey was in his romance comedy phase. It's a very cooker, cookie cutter romance movie, but if you know the movie, you do know the basic plot of it is Kate Hudson is a writer for a woman's magazine, and she wants to become a more real journalist, and na 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 but she has to write this article, so she meets this guy, Matthew McConaughey, and she's going to go do all the tropes, so she goes and gets him and attracts him, and then figures out how to, quote, lose a guy in 10 days. Not exactly an Oscar winner, but if you have a girl that you're hanging out with, it's also not the worst of the rom-coms you've ever seen. But she does 10 different things in order to lose him, and McConaughey is on the other side, and of course for hilarity to ensue, he couldn't break up with her because he was trying to win a bet, so he didn't want to leave, and she didn't want to leave, and there was sabotaging being done, but yet they stayed together, and of course at the end they fell in love because that's just how life works. Women, unfortunately, a lot of y'all see this stuff, especially the young ones, who, good God, the youth is wasted on the young. Come in and live forever! Long story long, the girl it, during the Phoenix Suns at the end of one of the most exciting games tried to pull the scene where in the movie, McConaughey's a huge Knicks fan. Shout out to the Knicks who also got eliminated, but you should have saw that coming. Um... So in the scene in the movie, McConaughey, it's the end of the game. In order to try to, quote, lose him in 10 days, she waits till the end of the game with like 20 seconds left and then goes, hey, I need a Coke. Can you go get it for me right now as a test to see if he'll actually be whipped enough to get off his ass and do it? And, of course, he did. 
and goes and gets her the coke during the most integral part of the game. And now apparently women see that and go, oh, my God, that's something I need to do. That's something I need to try. Well, then everyone loses their mind. I don't know if this is a fake or not, but this is probably influencing. I'm telling you, man or woman, this mm, careful, careful with this crap. So here we go. Here was so this was during the Phoenix game with like 30 seconds left. Big old smirk on her face, right? Keep it up. Keep it up. It's cute when you're young. It's cute when you're young and you think like, oh, guys and girls are just a dime a dozen and I can get rid of them. I'm going to reenact movies for the Instagram. And you know what? It worked. She's, she's being played right now currently. I'm sure she got a bajillion views for it. Is it worth it? And you don't understand. Same thing with John ja Morant to kind of bring this all back to the beginning and to make the final point just because you're young and the youth is wasted on the young and you probably will never understand until it's too late just like Ja it's you know throwing things away it's such a privileged and annoying way to look at things and we all do it none of us none of us are beneath having moments of just not valuing things when we have it doing things because we think it's cute or we think we're invincible or we think that the next day is guaranteed or the next one is guaranteed or the next opportunity is guaranteed. A lot of times it's not, man. A lot of times it's not. A lot of times you'll find out that there's not much left and all you have are the ones that you let go and unfortunately it's too late. Just saying, don't want to be dramatic, but I'm telling you, it can all go quick just like the time with us went quick and I gotta go. Ja, pull your head out of your ass. This girl, good luck with the next one. That guy, maybe you dodged a bullet. And we'll see. Talk to you next time.